What's up, y'all? Welcome to PS Panic Room. You know how we do it every week. We always bring a fantastic guest. This week is no different. But before I start off bringing a guest, you know I got to read these comments, man, that you guys leave in the comment section. Some of y'all, boy, whoo! Y'all got some, mm. And y'all, yes, you see I'm suited and booted, you know what I'm saying? You get suited and booted sometimes when, you know, when you feel like, you know, it's necessary, you know? I'm not saying it's not necessary other times, but you get what I'm saying. All right, y'all. From, this is from, oh, when I had my own self in the hot seat. You know when I did my own uh, video, you know, I, I, I interviewed myself. Um, Braxton says, this was very insightful. Keep going. Keep doing you a fan and dark skinned. Oh, uh, damn. All right. Well, shit. All right. Dark skin. Well, thank you. Dark skin. Um, you know, Braxton. All right. I appreciate that. This is one of the ones that was the first time I met Nick Cannon. Someone, um, rebel, Romele Bill says, Pierre is corny. All right. Thank you, brother. I've heard it before, and again, as long as you view it, it's cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm corny. And let me go to your page, all right? And then I'm, I'm creeping on your IP, IG page. Let's see how cool you are. Ramelli Bill. Okay, Ramelli Bill. All right? From the Steve Harvey fallout, okay. The real Q says, Pierre was one. Pierre was on you, my G. Well, Pierre, that was on you, my G. Oh, Pierre, that was on you, my G. You got to be prepared, especially if you're getting a couple of grand. None of your business, bro, but okay. You don't know what I was getting paid for that show. That was a huge opportunity. You can't only do 15 minutes for a 30-minute set. Now, I see you all in my business, man. That's putting more workload on the headliner. It was Steve Harvey. He ain't no problem with doing some more time. Come on, y'all. Shit. I just messed up a little bit. I was a little nervous. That's all, Blair. Y'all, all right. But, hey, I appreciate the comments. I'm going to read all of them, okay? So bring them on. Whatever my staff gives me, some comments what it is. All right, y'all. Y'all know what this show's about. And who's on the show? And y'all pretty much excited the guy I am. It's my homeboy, man, for 30 years. I've known this brother for 30 years, okay? There's a lot of friendship coming. In fact, he came all the way from Birmingham, Alabama to do the show for me, man. I really, really appreciate it. I mean, that's a long little drive, man. I know some people only do 20 minutes to come around the corner for me, but that's okay. He's here. Y'all have seen him. He, to me, he's a titan in the comedy world, okay? There's a kings of comedy. I hear all that, but he's a titan. His res resume is ridiculous, y'all. You know him. You love him. He's one of my good friends. I really appreciate him coming, y'all. Give it up for the one and only Mr. Ricky Smiley! Well, you know what I'm saying. Well, you, know, you know what I'm doing. What I'm doing. What I'm doing. If I, I, I would have known, I would have, you know what I'm saying. That's why I didn't want to tell you. Because I didn't want you to address right. me. Because you will outdress me, man. Golly, I, man. I, you, you had a recent photo shoot that was been going ridiculous, man. I had I had to go and kill him. You know, you have to do a photo shoot like every seven years. Okay. Or whatever to kind of reinvent yourself right. I feel or you. whatever. I feel you. And then this the one I didn't do to Beijing. Okay. So I okay. just let the gray come on out. Uh, no, I'm wrong with that. You know no wrong with that. But but you know a lot there's a lot of guys in their sixties. I got an uncle like seventy three. Right. And jet like like jet black. Like 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 who are you fooling? Yeah yeah jet, jet like yeah like jet black. Yeah jet black. <laughs> but look so <laughs> what made you do? Okay so you the seven years since you did a photo shoot. I mean, it's been about five to seven years ago okay, okay, since okay. the last time I did a photo okay, shoot. Okay, okay. Because I don't like to do them. You know what? A lot of people don't realize I don't either, man. <laughs> I hate I do, to do them. Do, but, but people say, but we got to do them in a way because, you, right. know, you know how. Yeah, you I used to have a headshot that was 15 years old. <laughs> the black and white. Say, what? That you ordered from Missouri when we first. Man, <laughs> I, I damn near had a pacifier in my mouth. I was so young in a picture, man. Like, right. that I walk in the room and they're like, that ain't you, bro. Yeah. That ain't you. <laughs> right. <laughs> but because right. I didn't like to take pictures, man. I didn't feel like taking pictures. Yeah, man. Makeup and, and yeah, the lip yeah. gloss right, and the right, people right, touch. Right. You know, all right, you know right. what I'm saying? Well, well, let me ask you, um, who, who came up with the, the concept of the clothes? Did you have a, a designer? No, I was a stylist. Uh, so here's the deal. Uh -huh. I was in Chicago for three days. Mm -hmm. uh, we had three shows with D-Ray Davis. Okay, yep, yep, yep. At the Airy Crown. He'd do it on New Year's. Mm -hmm. D-Ray is like my little brother. Okay. So uh, I was like, well, that Saturday, uh, that Friday, which I had nothing to do all day. Okay. So Chicago has some of the best photographers, some of the best stylists. It's a big city. One of my favorite cities. A absolutely. You know, you go in, you get your Giordano's pizza, you go get your Garrett's yeah. popcorn, or you go get your Uncle Remus, go get you some chicken or whatever, you know. Right. And uh, so I was like, I have nothing to do but wait for the show that night. So right. I got up at 5 a.m. And we just shot until noon, from 5 a.m. to noon. Now, you have some slick clothes on it, for real. Do you, uh, like... 
is that your new look? I mean, I mean, are, are you the type of person that put on, put on whatever you want to put on? Let me look. Let me yeah, look at it. Or you have I a go with different looks. Like I'm not like sometimes I'm in the mood for suits or whatever. Right. And then I go through my little. Uh, you know, you have to kind of see what's out there, what everybody rocking. Okay. Or whatever. So I try to be updated because you're on the radio every day. So okay. you went from hip hop radio to R and B. Okay. Or whatever. So you got to be. You just can't be. You know, have on the uh, mighty clouds of joy suits with the square toe gators. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, you know, we Call just did the, on the Lord, on the Lord. Okay. We, we, just, we just did Detroit together, right? And right. Detroit is heavy for gators and all that. And oh, I remember yeah. one time I went and bought some gators from a place called, I think City Slickers or something like that, or Broadway. One, one, one was cheaper than the other. I bought them for $100. I didn't know any better. You know, gators would cost a lot of money. Right. Man, I told that audience, I thought I was proud of them. Across from the Anthenium. Right, right, store. exactly. I, and, exactly. Yeah. So, I, I, I walked out and I said, yeah, I got these gators for $100. That Detroit damn near laughed me off stage, man. <laughs> I didn't know that, that was a cheap price for some gators. I didn't wear gators back then. I didn't know that. They're like, man, if you don't get that damn cheap-ass gators out of here, man, I said, hell no. Because Detroit is real with the gators. It was a dude in the audience had on a blue mink. I thought Cookie Monster because the uh, light was in my face. Right, right, right. And dude right. came in with a blue mink with a hoodie on, man. Just Detroit got, like, that's... The, 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 you know, so I, I used to joke about that. You gotta Detroit, come with it. When it comes to gators, they try to out gator each other. Oh, I yeah. saw a dude with damn near teeth snapping in the front. He had, he had a snout of yeah, gator on his shoe. Yeah, real I said, yeah. hell no. And every, I tell people, the, 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 back in the days, the, the, uh, the cameraman would make more money than the comedians because everybody want to take pictures. Right. You know what I'm saying? For like right. intermission. Like all people in Detroit, when they, when they go out, they need to have a picture <laughs> of that. And him and his girl got to look alike, and you better back up and get my shoes in your shit. Yeah. If I don't yeah. see the shoes in the shot, I ain't paying you for that. You better Polaroid. be sharp when you go to Detroit. You better Man. have your, your game got to be tight or you'll get laughed off the stage. That's true. Back. That's true. And what's cool about going to Detroit with this, this show is me, you, Faison, uh, Damon Williams, uh, 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 Capone. Capone. And it was cool, man, the, the camaraderie of us, man, the yeah. years of us on stage. You know, I do some shows sometimes. You got some of the young cats or some people right. that don't get along with each other in the back. You know, it's, it's a business. We get it. You right. know, whatever, whatever. But here I felt like for the Detroit show, for us, I felt like we were all cheering for each other. We hadn't seen each other in a long yeah. time. We were cheering for each other. For me, Pierre, I couldn't even really perform at the best of my ability because what? I, well, that was only because I haven't seen you perform in years. Yeah, in years. Right. I haven't seen Damon in years. Right. I hadn't seen Capone. Right. And I never seen, never seen Face on Love perform. When you told me, I didn't believe that. I never met Face on Love. I've interviewed him on my morning man. show several times, and I never met man. Big Worm. And and I swear, man, it was like, you know. And we've been texting each other ever since. Right, like me, right. you, Face on. Like we've been on the text like ever mm, since. Sure, like it was sure. just, just to watch y'all rock or right, whatever. Right. It was a breath of fresh air because I hadn't seen all OGs. Well, you triple OG. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, yeah. Right, I don't care what you say. All right. <laughs> we might be the same age, but you've been in the game longer yeah, than me. I started 17. Yeah, I, yeah, I know yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So, so, <laughs> let's go back to your situation. Yeah. When did you first start? You know, you know, like when? when how, what, what, what made you think you even be funny enough to go on stage? I used to. Um, I was going to Alabama State University, so we used to charge people sit at our table, sit at our table in the cafeteria. So I was sitting there and roast with some guys from right, you right. know from other cities or whatever. But we was like in high school. Okay. We would charge people a dime. You want to sit at this table? You had to pay a dime. Damn. Nah, how yeah, old yeah. How old is you? A dime. Yeah, I'm class. I'm high school class eighty seven. Oh, shit. So a dime. Okay. A popsicle was like a, a thirty high, cent. High you a triple OG? Shit. <laughs> yeah. Goddamn dime. In age, but. But, but right, yeah, okay. but, but we were but we would sit there and roast all the time. Sure, sure, sure. So a comedian took me to a comedy club. Okay. And I saw him on stage. He was pretty good. Right, um, right. Uh, 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 Charles Jenkins. I don't remember him. Uh, he was a Christian com Christian okay. comic. And I was like, I think I could do that right there. So mm -hmm. I went back uh, about a couple of months later, sure. and I did open mic night. Sure. So I did open mic night for four months. But was you afraid when you first went on stage, the first time you went on stage, or did you feel because uh, you were around your friends? Well, see, I was always hosting the high school talent show. Oh, well, you you Every okay. year in high school from the 10th grade to the 12th grade, I was always hosting the high school talent show. And I would, like, do impressions of certain teachers and right. make fun. Who, well, who is this? Right. You know what I'm saying? And right. have everybody cracking up. So I was, And I was always in plays. Okay. And then wow. I'm a, I'm a I'm a musician, so I'm a pianist. I'm a, okay. uh, so I'm always symphonic band, jazz band, the trumpet, the baritone, French horn, the tuba. Okay. Uh, I always assembly programs, all that shit. Right, oh, right, right. Curse. No, no, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't make no money. I'm so anyway. used to doing radio. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, okay, <laughs> right, right, but not relax, miss. It's what it yeah. is. Uh, it's your water over there, in case you need okay. to get some. Yeah, yeah, I got you. So, okay, so you went on. You started doing comedy for four months, amateur night. Um, when did you take it to the next level of, um, you know, did you get paid soon? Or yeah, I got paid $100 at the comedy club. Same guy, Bruce Ayers, gave me oh, yeah. my first opportunity. Uh, I, I opened from Mark DeShera. 
I remember that dude. What a I white, dude white dude with the long yeah. curly hair. I remember my California, yeah, Martin yeah. Shera. And uh, I opened for him. And then the next time I opened, he put me on the show with George Wallace. Wow. So that's a, that's wow. a second headliner. And then I opened for Carl Strong. And then James Stevens the third. Wow. But but right. but can I tell you some history? Come on, talk to me. Talk to me. So I, so I performed for white people for like I was gonna ask you about that. A year and a half, two yeah. years. Right. So I went to a black comedy club Ooh. in a, in Atlanta called the Comedy Act Theater. Okay, I remember that. Yeah, so yeah. I so Earthquake and I we used to do this club called the Spira Gyra in Carrollton, Georgia. Okay. No, it's no. it's kinda like an Applebee's and they would put a a, a a stage in the corner and Gary Abdo would book acts. Or whatever, right. and uh, so he was like, "Come on, come go to Atlanta." Well, with what me. year was this, roughly? This had to be uh ninety. Okay, ninety. Ninety. Right, go ahead. So he was like, "Hey, come on, we're gonna go to a black comedy club called the Comedy Act Theater," and so we went in there, man, and uh, uh we paid. We had to pay. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we paid. Who was to get you? In. Yeah. Yeah. You wasn't right. So we went in there. We stood in the back, and guess who was on stage? Who? Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> was, I, was I really the first comedian I ever saw in a black comedy club? Was you? And I sat there. I told you I've been black a long time. I, 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 and I sat there. I get really excited. I'm excited just telling this no, man no, no, go ahead. because you was on stage performing. And you was funny that night or whatever. And uh, you came off stage and you came back to the bar. I remember that. And I uh, spoke to Earthquake and uh, mm -hmm. I walked up to him like, "Hey man, how you doing? My name Ricky Smiley." I said, I'm doing an open mic now. He was like, yeah, man, yeah, man. All right, man, keep doing what you're doing. Just just stay with it, stay okay. with it. Okay. And uh, you was really nice to me the all first right. night I met. I, I had been done getting emotional. All right, all right, all right. No, no, no bro, I, I, I get emotional because I'm, a, I'm a, um, nobody, nobody have to be nice to you. You understand? Right, right, right. We, we 50 now. Right, right, sure, sure, sure. I get emotional, uh, and it's not just that. How the emotions come from. I feel um, you on it. You know, I went. I went out to L.A. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anywhere to stay. Mm -hmm. um, I was nervous because I had sure. never performed in L.A. before. Sure. You let me come to your apartment. Mm -hmm. You let me sleep on your floor. Mm -hmm. Then you was nice enough and kind enough mm. to take me to the, the set because uh, Terry Tuff stayed there too. Terry Tuff. Terry Tuff was sleeping on the couch. I slept on the floor. That was a BT, right? Was it, was you... BT coming. Wow, you was getting paid one hundred and fifty dollars. I remember that, brother. You took me over there. You not only did you take me over there, you coached me. Say, hey man, it's LA. You need to relax. Go on stage and have fun. And you stayed there with me and gave me a ride back to your apartment. I had nothing. I didn't have no money. I barely had a plane ticket. I uh -huh. So when you asked me to um, ask me to come over here to do oh, this, sure. two hour drive ain't nothing. Oh man, I appreciate uh, that, bro. Really. Uh, so I, 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 it really meant a lot to me, and I have so much respect for you. I see you as a, you know, a triple OG and a big brother. You was one of the first to, 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 to make ways with me, and that kind of got me, got me going and got me started. So I, I'll never forget, it, and I just, I appreciate want, that. Want to tell you, thank oh, you, man. I, no, I Without getting that. all the most, I, I'll start crying. I'll, uh, I'll cry when I get in the car and go home. Oh shit! <laughs> I'll cry, but I can't cry because chicks watching. Right. <laughs> no, I, I ain't got no viewers, so you alright? Just me and you gonna watch this motherfucker. Yeah, okay. Don't worry about nobody watching yeah, this. That's a lie. Uh, I'll no, watch it. No, I, no, man. But I, I thank you for that, man. I, I, it, there's, there's no reason why not to be cool to somebody, not, 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 not to be nice to somebody in this business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Especially if they done nothing to you, man. And right. I would even pay it forward. If I did that to you, I hope you would do it for someone else, man. You know what I'm saying? And and and, and, and I mentor a lot of comics because of. The way you treated me, I pay it for it. Comedian Rita Brent. Yep. I'm the first one to ever take Corey Holcomb on the road. I'm the wow. first one to ever. Uh, I, I put Corey Holcomb. He was doing open mic night in Chicago. He said, man, how can I get out of Chicago? And I, I booked him on shows. I had him opening for me. Corey Holcomb, Rod Mann, comedian J.J. Yes. J. Williamson. Wow. Uh, comedian Rita Brent. Right, uh, right, whatever right. I mentored all of them, man, and uh, I let a lot of comics. JB, uh, what well, JB was doing it, but a lot of comics came over and slept on my couch and slept on my see, floor. See, and I, I, I treated this thing like it was a fraternity. They, you, you understand? And that's what it is because we all go through the same stuff. It really is, and, and I'm, I'm glad you said that. That's why I fight so hard for comedians, you mm -hmm. know, to be respected. Like if I'm emceeing the show, you are gonna be quiet for the comics. You, like you said, and I remember I, I like what you said on stage. You can tease me, you can talk about me. Right. These brothers here or sisters, you are gonna listen. To them, right? I'm gonna find your ass if you don't. Bring I don't all the power to yeah, me. Exactly. Don't disrespect but, the guests. That's right. I can, now some comics don't care. Some well, MCs. I learned from, I learned from yeah. you. Because well, I, 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 I don't. I don't. I don't have to have the best set. Here's the deal. Whoever's going, whoever the headliner is, it's about them. I have nothing to prove. I performed in Detroit a hundred times. I don't have anything to prove. My job is to make sure that Damon Williams, Capone, Pierre, and Faison 
have a good show. Wow. Number one priority. Wow, right. And I just fill in in between right. and do what I'm supposed to do. That's what I was taught. That's what I watch you do. Right, right. That's what cool. I watch Steve do. Right. And I'm just t- trained. Right, right, so, right. Wow, wow. That's, that's true. But I, I'm not glad you said it because I feel the same way. When I'm hosting the show, I used to host a big thing in Phoenix, Arizona. Shout out to Phoenix, Arizona. I was the MC, big theater. I used to bring like five shows per year, you know, there. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't about me no more. I was like, y'all, y'all do it. Y'all, y'all have a good time. Right. I'll, 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 if it goes down, I'll bring it up. Right. Between the comedians. After that, I don't have to be the star of the show. But so many people have that ego of, I got to be the star of the show. I got to be, I'm going to tear it up. I'm going to run. And, and it, to me, it ain't about that. Just well, do your are, time and do what you do. We secure. That's why. Well, no. well <laughs> we, ding, 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 we secure. Ding, ding. We don't have nothing to prove. Right, right, right. When you don't right. have nothing to prove, man. You secure or whatever. You don't have to do all that extra stuff and all that vibrato, man. You just cool. Right. How, how did you wind up getting the host comic view? I was one of. I was a little jealous about that. One. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I'm be real. I'm about to cry on this motherfucker. Okay. Shit. Okay. But it's gone, gone. <laughs> Shit. If you're gonna talk. <laughs> <laughs> he he hell, nigga. Shit. I was, I was, what the fuck? He get on this mama. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you some more about this, brother. Come on, we have a time to sit down. Huh? No, 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 no. <laughs> There's a long line behind me with jealous too, nigga. Don't think I was the only one. We all were like, Ricky, what? Well, they had to let they had to let Lester Berry host first. <laughs> so what happened? They they turned you remember they turned Comic View into a competition. competition yes, I remember that. So you do a special. Mm-hmm. So they pick what, twelve people to do a special mm-hmm. and then they vote on who's gonna be the host. Right. So that's what happened. I didn't know anybody. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's what it was. So I did. This, I, I I went up there. I had a killer set. And they said we're gonna you're gonna do an hour special, right? So you go, you perform. I think they give you like five thousand dollars. Oh, that's a lot of money. Or fifteen hundred between fifteen hundred and five thousand. BET, about fifteen hundred. Back in the day, yeah, was 1, Pro, I think it was fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, don't go five thousand BET, nigga. Hey, shit. You get five thousand yeah. the whole. <laughs> right, right. You, you get five thousand the whole the whole season. The whole season. <laughs> I'm about to say the whole season. What the fuck? You had five thousand shows. Okay. Right, BET. Right. Okay. right. <laughs> Everybody thought you made it when you made a BT. Like, no, nigga, I ain't making when I made a BT. Right, right, <laughs> right. So, so what happened? You go, you go host the show. Uh, uh, you do the special, uh-huh. and then they decide who had the, the the best special. Right, and then you become the host. So I hosted uh-huh. in two thousand when it came to Atlanta. Right, right, so right. So that was perfect. And then I hosted again in two thousand and four. Okay. When I went back to LA. So what happened is when I hosted in Atlanta, the ratings was so high. Or whatever, because I had, you remember I had the little cobblestone comedy club right, in right, Birmingham. Right, right, I remember that. So, Pierre, yeah. I was on stage every weekend. I was on stage every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So when you're on stage like that in the same spot, you develop so much material. Yes, yes. Your timing is just unbelievable. Yeah, not that, yeah. not the fact that you're a great writer. Your right. timing, because you you perform every yeah. weekend. You That's got a cool. stage to work with. So you got to come with new stuff because the same audience every weekend. Right, sure. So all that experience, and then it just, boom, once you get out on stage, like, oh, this guy's really funny. Not necessarily really funny. You just got all that stage right, time. Right, right, Anybody right. that preach, right. that preach all the time, and he do revivals, he going to come to your church on men's day, and they will have the paramedics. I was like, this dude preached so good. Right. This guy is anointed by God. Not necessarily. He, <laughs> he preach re- all yeah, the he time. Been rehearsing, right. he, been, he been rehearsing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what happened. I moved to Dallas, Texas in 2000, in September 2000, right after 9-11, 2001. Right. And I got a, someone told me, I was in, and they said, um, Ricky Smiley's at the Bronco Bowl, right? And I said, okay, okay I'm thinking it's a comedy club. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go see him. I remember that. I'm going to go see him. I'm going to pull up. On Ricky say, what's up at the little Bronco Bowl? So I pull up in a, I get there, and first of all, the parking lot was huge. It had about, you know, 500 cars. I'm like, nigga, Ricky Smiley, this motherfucker? What is, what is it? So then I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I'm hating. You know, it's, I'm jealousy. So I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, okay, it's going to be a couple people up in that bitch. I walked in, and it was like 2,500 people. It was packed. It was yeah. about that, right? I yeah, said, right. Ricky Smiley and who in this motherfucker? I said, hell, my <laughs> God. Everybody for Ricky. I hadn't seen you for so long. I didn't right. know. You jumped up really quickly. I said, what? So I went to the backstage. Yeah. At first, I watched your show, and I thought it was so dope about your show. You came out and did yourself, and then you went, then you went intermission, like where you went away, and they show clips of you from Comic View on yeah. on screen. And then you remember the piano was right there, so yeah. I was like, "What's? I never really seen no comic do that. Most comics just do jokes, you know. That's right. it. And then you came out as Miss Bertrice, is it Bertrice? Bernice Jenkins. Bernice, Bernice Jenkins. Yeah. Then you came out changed by her. I was like, this thing got a whole show like a Vegas act. <laughs> I said, no wonder he's at the Bronco Bowl. I'm over here at the toilet bowl for two hundred dollars for the weekend and shit. He had the Bronco Bowl. You had Dominique was on the show. You remember, I don't even remember yes. that. So, yes. Yep. And I was like, wow, Ricky Smiley watching, has arrived. Watching James Stevens the third. Shout out to James Stevens. Yeah, yeah. James yeah, Stevens yeah. the third, man. You watching all that stuff. You watching Carl Strong. You watching comedians mix in music and their musical uh capabilities with their with their comedy. 
Yeah, but you had stuff. a whole show though, man. You had comedy, yeah. you had personation, you were on the piano, you know what I'm saying? I was like, you had right. videos of it. It was like a real show. Did you come up with that concept or did Gary come up with that? Uh, Gary said he come up with it. Uh, well, kind of Gary, yeah, uh, Gary. kind of encouraged me to do it. So okay. I had all those characters and stuff. That, yeah. that, that was really dope. Again, I yeah. had not seen a comic do that. Um, yeah. When did you feel like you made it? Around that time, like, like, like you was on the next level. Like, okay, we passed the comedy club. We passed a little small situations. Uh, right, right about two, uh, I started doing theaters like um, 2000, 2002, man. We was right, rolling. Right, right, right. We was doing wow. theaters, seat 3,500. I would do, when I, when I would do Atlanta Civic Center, right. I would do two shows. <laughs> How, do how does shows. it feel to go, because I ain't been to that level yet, how does it feel to go from being a, being a struggling comic to now mm -hmm. you're doing theaters and they selling out? They selling out. It's million. a lot of hard work, uh, uh, Pierre, man. It's a grind. Like, really? Like, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I, I just thank God for allowing me to see some of the things that I've seen. Because one of the things that I, I learned, uh, Pierre, if I can do it all over again, I would do a lot of stuff different. Really? All money ain't good money. Ooh, hold on, hold on. You know what I'm saying? All money ain't good money. You know what I'm saying? Know it's, it's, I, a, it's a lot of people in the cemetery chasing that star. All money's not good money. So you're saying like the people you're working with might be that wasn't nah, good to me? Nah, not necessarily that, man. It's just some stuff like, you know, hey, I, I don't, you don't have to do everything. Mm. It's okay to sit your sit up and go sit at home and enjoy yourself for the okay. weekend and spend time, you know, okay. with your kids. And right, just, right. Just like what I'm doing now, That's, just simplicity. Right, right. Everything right. streamlined. Everything sleep like today. I woke up. I did radio three and a half hours. I got off, took my time. I ate. I, I, I ate some breakfast. I mm -hmm. had some, I had a waffle and some bacon. Like mm -hmm. I really made some waffle mix. Oh, oh okay. Well, you got I put time some bacon it. in the oven. Okay. And I sat there and ate. I watched the news. Okay. Got okay. in my truck and I drove over here. Came over here, took a meeting, and then came over here to do this. And I go home, go to bed, get up, do radio tomorrow, have a free day tomorrow. I like what you say about all money and good money because I'll be honest, I, I believe I messed my marriage up when I was younger because I was chasing to be famous and I was doing yeah. every show and I wasn't in tune with my wife. I'd come home, I'd make the money and I'd come home and we'd go to a nice dinner on a Sunday and she's there talking about her week or whatever and I'm eating and I'm just thinking about other shows to do and I was just thinking about yeah. doing every little show. I mean, one time I, I felt bad, I'll tell you a quick story. I went to her, I went to her, 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 her job uh, part, Christmas party and I remember she was there and I had to go do a 15 minute set at the comedy store. And I left her there to go to the comedy store, man. Mm -hmm. And my wife was by herself. Now, other people had couples and stuff. And I was like, I'll never do that again. I didn't think at the time. Yeah. I'm trying to make it. I'm trying to chase every dollar, every situation. And you're right. I was, as I look back, I regret it. And I asked my wife. I bought her all kind of material goods and stuff. I said, I bought you everything when we, when we were talking about divorce. She said, yeah, but you didn't give me time. I mean, you gave me everything but time. Right. And I said, you know what? I'll never do that again. And that's why I like what you do with your grandkids. And your grand, you spend time with them. And the cat in the cradle and the silver mm -hmm. spoon. Right. Little boy blue and the man in the moon. Mm -hmm. When you're coming home, Dad, I don't know when, but we'll get together then. Is that Jim Croce or is that? Uh, I think so. Yeah, That's yeah. one of my son's favorite song, man. Oh, that, 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 that song's so deep, man, if you ever heard it. Right, right, right. The cat yeah, in yeah. the cradle right, and the silver right. spoon. Yeah, if it's time go by so fast and they grow. It's a deep song. Right. But me and my oldest son, we always sing it all right, the time. Right, Because that was like really what we went through. You right. didn't have time. You was busy. Now your son grown and you need, you got time. Now right. he don't have time. Right, sure. It's, no. a, it's a great story. And uh, so, you know. Now, you now go that through stuff. That makes sense. All right, so when you start, when your trajectory started moving, and I'm talking about it moved, Ricky. I'm, 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 see, you, you, you were in it, but I was back there watching it and seeing how, when it started really taking off. Mm -hmm. um, it seemed like you had a, a real good stamp from Steve, Steve Harvey. Oh, yeah. You know, when that yeah. stamp hit, when he officially stamped you, like saying you were like pretty much the next one and stuff, mm -hmm. you felt that. Um, I think y'all did a special. You did a special in New York or Be something like that. Was that? Before that, Pierre, I was opening. I had opened up, did some of those dates that Guy Torrey can do, open it up for the Kings of Comedy. I didn't know that. And uh, so he came to Birmingham. I was on the Buck Wild Morning Show. Uh, not Buck Wild from New York, but it was no, another right, Buck right. Wild. No, right, right. Light skin dude. Yeah, right, yeah, I right, right, right. Yeah, I Sammy I like Mack. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was on this morning show. And uh, uh, Steve came because the Kings of Comedy was coming. Mm -hmm, Bernie mm -hmm. Mack said, DL, Steve. And uh, and I, it, the energy was good on the morning show. Steve said, hey, you need to come open up for the Kings of Comedy tonight. And I was like, what? What? So, man, I got off the air. Jumped in my car, drove to Atlanta because that was my visitation weekend. I never miss a visitation weekend for my son. Picked up my son from school, drove all the way back to Birmingham, went wow. and found the suit, got dressed, went and found somebody to tailor the suit. And I walked up wow. on stage. He said, you got to do three minutes. I had to ride. I had to share dressing rooms with Steve. I had to be quiet, speak to when spoken to. I just had discipline or whatever. And um, walked on stage. I did three minutes. And I introduced Steve. What Steve did was, 
instead of him coming on stage with the music or whatever, he stopped the applause. He told me to come back out. He said, Birmingham, I just need y'all to know this is the next one. Wow. He did that. Wow. I, I remember um, walking off stage and I went in the bathroom and I just cried. Sure, sure. Because you did that, you did that for me in my hometown. And we at the there was at the Jefferson Civic Center. And he told me to come in and sit down. And there's Bernie Mac, there's Cedric the Entertainer. Wow. There's Dio Hughley and everybody's shaking your hands. I knew Sid right. because I was I used to be Sid's opening act. Steve introduced me to Sid. Eric Rohn was my one of my first manager. Wow, was it? Okay. So I was I, I went I went to some of the places that I went to for the first time, I was opening for Sid. Hmm. And uh, but but just to sit there and see that and looking at this, I'm like, I'm gonna I hope to do something like this one day. I never did it, but I did it when I I uh, got on the Martin Lawrence uh, lit, uh, lit, mm -hmm. lit AF tour. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one of the best things that ever happened in my whole career. That was like. Really? Yeah, And man. that just recently happened. Oh, yeah. That was. Oh, uh, Ricky, we got a lot before then. But you yeah. had your own sitcom. That, that, yeah, that I was, did. Yeah, I remember I came down and watched it and stuff. I think Jamie Brown was on, on yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. What? Uh, yeah, sitcom. And, that, yeah. and then uh, six, uh, two, that was. Two seasons of that with J. Anthony Brown and Ray J. And then I had six seasons of Ricky Smiley for real. For real, right, show. right, the reality show. That Me was and my great, kids, yeah, yeah. radio personalities. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. But in Dish Nation. Right, right, right. No, I know that, but I'm saying for you to say that was the biggest thing. Uh, you had a lot of yeah. stuff. In, when, it's funny. I sent back. I said, I'm gonna it's talk so, to my man Ricky. I said, I'm gonna, talk, I'm gonna talk to my boy Ricky. We're gonna talk about some stuff that we went through and did some funny stuff. Right. And then all of a sudden, I said, let me Google him first. <laughs> I started looking at that list. I said, yeah, I'm not about to talk about all all this. So you know what? Right. For Ricky Smiley fans, I ain't talking about everything. You can Google the rest of this in between shit. Right. Okay. I'm gonna yeah. talk about the time me and him and T Rex were in Virginia, <laughs> and we saw this old lady walking in there with the white hair. Right. And she had a white hair. I said, look like she got a candy cotton <laughs> cotton candy bush. And this boy fell out for like 20 minutes. Man, I hit the floor. <laughs> she looked like Mary Bethune McCloud or something. She had yeah. a big old bum. <laughs> yeah, you and, you and uh, uh, T Rex. T Rex, y'all yeah. was walking through the mall roasting everybody. 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 And uh, we was at the, uh, the How was it the Howard Johnson Hotel? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what the they Howard did. Howard Johnson yeah. Hotel. Yep, yep, yep. In Virginia. The Comedy Zone. Comedy Zone. He's having in tours. Virginia. And, yes. uh, uh, and, and I was just to be with y'all that weekend, man. That was everything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we have oh. <laughs> everything. Every T time we see, we always talk about cotton candy bush. Cotton candy bush. That old lady had a like shit. Look, you, you, look, look, you just go to a bush. And, uh, 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 right. <laughs> swirl up and shit. It's just the way it looked. Y'all had to been there. It was a little light up in that sucker. Oh, yeah. man. In they, fact, they, they, they roasted everybody that oh, walked yeah. by. Now, that's what we do. Like, okay, I'm like, I, I need to get better at my roast. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. T Rex is a beast with that, yeah. too, man. We loved it. Um, I remember one time we came to Birmingham, and right after that we came to Birmingham, excited to see you. Because yeah. we were doing a show, me and T-Rex, and we said we're going to hang out with we all going to hang out. I said, well, cool. And we're waiting for you. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. Did he go Hollywood? Did, did, did Ricky go Hollywood? On? We waited again because we could all ride together. Right. And you did not come. You did not come to my show. I said, man, fuck Ricky. I thought Ricky was cool like that. <laughs> And I turned what around happened? and I said, you got shot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, remember you got shot? Yeah, we, I was yeah. waiting for you that day. You got shot. Right. We was like, what happened to Ricky? And then Ricky didn't show Right, Bugsies. right, right. Exactly. Yeah, man, I got shot. I almost died. Well, I, uh, yeah, yeah. Pierre, they was robbing. Uh, all right, so I had a 300 ZX T-top. <laughs> you should have been robbed for that. Mm -hmm. You should, Yeah, yeah. You should have been in trouble for that. But, but no, that no, dog. No. Back then. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. That you're was right. 95. Right. If you had a 300 ZXT <laughs> top, we had to take the top off and put the, the in top the trunk. in the trunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You were, you were right. It was summertime. <laughs> and um, so on the news that morning, they found Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman's body. Okay. Right? And they say there's word about is, is OJ Simpson had something to do right, with this. Right, sure. So I'm on my way home and somebody hit me up on the page. I look at my page, you know, some chick done beat me or whatever because mm -hmm. I'm hosting a little comedy because so, you know, somebody hit me. So I stopped at the pay phone. There was no cell phones right, unless you right, was a drug right, dealer. Right, right, sure. We didn't get our first cell phone until right. we start, you know, doing comedy for the little, little drug dealer right, down sure. in Baton Rouge. That's when all the comedians we'll got so their good. first burnout phone. You know what I'm talking about? I know. I know. Yeah. I do know it. I, I, <laughs> me and Corey, me, me and uh, Kenny Howard and Corey Hogan, we got our, uh, our cell phone, phone the same up. weekend. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And so, so, so I started. <laughs> I'm just thinking about it too. Damn, Nino Brown. Yeah. You know. What I'm saying? Yeah. So, so I, so I, I stopped at the payphone. A guy was using the payphone next, next to me. Okay. <clears throat> the guys came out. They was robbing him. They said, "Get it up." He said, "Man, they ain't got nothing." It was like, boom. They said, "Now get it up." Shot you because they, he ain't give it up. 
They didn't ask me for nothing, Pierre. Hell I, yeah. I, you I, gave it up. You I would have gave it yeah, up. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I grabbed my side. I started running, you know, and now, you know, I'm running like uh, Ricky right. was when he got oh, shot. Oh, hell no. On, on boys. Boys, on, the, boys, uh, boys, boys in the hood. Right, right. 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 That's why I can't no! watch. <laughs> no, Ricky Smiley. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not Ricky. <laughs> Ricky Smiley. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Smiley. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. So I ended up in a hospital in uh and that's what happened. Mm -hmm. I, I got shot, and and uh, th that that I'm still dealing with that because, really? yeah, bro, my daughter got shot last right, year. Right, I was gonna get in that. Yeah, right? wow. So that was a trigger, right? Right, it makes sense. And it just kind of is it, messed up because we serve the community, and we're a family of five, and two of us are gunshot victims, not by a white police officer, by our own people. Watch out now. Watch out now. From the community which we serve. Watch out now. I said it. Yeah, yeah. That's my life. It happened. And, you know, so my daughter got shot. So now that was like a triple trigger. Mm -hmm. It brought back my stuff. Mm -hmm. And then your youngest daughter, that's a, a sophomore at Baylor University in Waco, Texas, mm -hmm. gets shot on her birthday. I'm on the air. Yeah, yeah I saw that. Yeah, yeah. That I'm was. on the air doing my radio show, and I read my text message. My daughter's mother said, hey, you know, Aaron got shot last night. Uh, she's going into surgery. I'm like, what? I'm on the air. Right. I'm like in the middle of a radio show. Wow. I COVID came, so there were no flights from Birmingham to Dallas. So I had to fly to Dallas. Uh, not not oh. Birmingham to Houston. I had to fly to Dallas, to drive. DFW, drive to Houston. To, no, drive to the other airport in Dallas. Love, love, field. love, love, right, right, and right. then fly from fly, get on Southwest and fly from Love Field to Houston Hobby, mm. only to make it to the hospital to sit outside. Can't go in the hospital. What, what as a parent, what, what did because I wonder what my parents felt. What did you feel? You, she's alive, so that's good. Yeah. So you had to be happy for at least that part of it. But what goes through your mind? You know, your daughter Pierre, gets shot. Let me, let me tell you the craziest part. So my daughter got shot. I stayed in Houston for the rest of the week, um, and that Saturday came. Okay. Turkey leg hut. All of the restaurants, people sent flowers. Nice. Portia Williams, you know, different ones sent flowers. Shaq called ever. So, wow. so I'm at my uh, my daughter's mother's townhouse, and my parents were there, and my my baby mama, my daughter's mother's parents were there. My other kids were there. We were all there. It was a lot of flowers. And a lot of food. What does that feel like? Yeah, funeral. A repast. Yeah, yeah, repast, right, right. The only difference was your daughter sitting there yeah. on the couch with a cast on her leg because she got shot twice. And you sit there and if and you see all of these flowers and all of this food and people there and wasn't nobody celebrating nothing, wasn't nothing to celebrate. Everybody was just like it felt like a repast. Mm -hmm. The only difference was, that person was still your alive. daughter sitting there on the couch. That's that's the thing that I can't get out of my head. That that had me feeling some kind of way. So, I went to work Monday. Went back to Dallas, and I'm on the air, and I probably playing Tupac. I get around, and I was on the air. All right, y'all. Fifteen minutes after the hour, Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Gary got the tea and the clue today. Coming up next, here's Tupac. I get around, and it was like somebody came and whispered, "Somebody just shot your daughter." I freaking lost it in the studio. Mm -hmm. I lost my mind. Mm -hmm. This days later, and that was the first time that it really just uh, 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 hit me. And I had to leave work, and I couldn't go work, work the next day. I was traumatized. Traumatized. Okay. Right then, I lost it. They had to. They had to take somebody. Had to drive me home. And this okay, days later. Okay. Yeah. I was saying, why, why, why did it take days? I'm. I'm just thinking. Why did why Pierre, it take? Why it's it's just that? like, like it's just like when somebody died, man. You you get so caught up in the. Funeral arrangements, getting the flowers, writing out the obituary, doing all this stuff. Then you go to the funeral, then you go to the cemetery. And then when you're at home and you're quiet all of a sudden, or when you come off stage. Bro, when you come off stage, it hit me. Like, my granddad died. Oh, okay, hold on. So no one verbally, no one really came. It's just in your mind. My mind. Oh, that's okay. I'm about to say, it well, was like somebody come. walked up oh, behind me and was some, like, okay. somebody just said, shot right, sure, your daughter. Sure, sure. And that shit, it, it, I, I fell apart. Wow. Yeah. Wow, wow. Well, I'm glad she's uh, survived and all that. But, you know, maybe the celebration, it was a celebration. She was alive, brother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I sit around eating and stuff. They think, yeah. you, you know, 
Right now, it's a lot the turkey of turkey leg hut was good. Was the, it was the, it? the turkey leg with the, yeah. the macaroni and cheese, and they had some little greens, but they, they, these little silver pans. Right. So yeah, it was it was good because you don't get that at the repast. It's always churches. <laughs> And then the uh, Baptist Boy, macaroni right. and cheese that you have to cut right, like a right, brownie. Right, right, sure. But you sure. have full gospel like macaroni and cheese, but then you have the hard mac. But I tell you what, uh, uh, this ADD kicking in. Bone Crusher, the rapper, make oh, the make the right. best macaroni, macaroni and, cheese. and cheese of all time. I'm trying to get him on the show. I, I will put him. Bone Crusher macaroni and cheese, what? and he will not release the recipe. Three cheeses at least. At least I don't, no, 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 I don't no. He, no he showed me some of the stuff that he put. Air, people, people in here have had it. Bone Crusher, the rapper, make the best damn ma him and I heard his you saying online, but I don't know if it's true. Yeah. Tell y'all blow up Bone Crusher. <laughs> Stalk him. Tell him to release the Kraken. <laughs> release, release the, the, the Kraken. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right. So with all the success, let's go back a little bit. So all success. So you started doing all these movies and and and, and you did a whole bunch of movies. You killed it in um in, on Friday. Next, <laughs> Friday, Friday up the night. next. I ain't gonna lie, you <laughs> killed it, dude. I ain't bullshit. You and Mike Epps really killed it. You know what I'm saying? I really right. I said that. I was like, damn, Ricky's funny as shit in this thing, man. Yeah. You're funny, dude. You I went really out there funny. to shoot my Yeah, I didn't of course you know I didn't read the whole script. You didn't. I just read the sides. Okay, I just damn. need to know my part. <laughs> I don't have time to read the whole script. <laughs> really? <laughs> I just had my little side. Right, right, right. I just need to know what do you, you need me to do. What? what? Right, right. Okay, run down the street. Right, okay, right. and I got it. Right. And you need me to do it. So I went. I came back to Birmingham. I flew back out to mm. shoot one more scene. Right. And I went back to Birmingham. Friday of the next come out. So I go stand in line at the movie theater. I'm in Birmingham. Everybody's talking about. They're all on the radio. Man. Friday of the next. Friday right. of the next. So I thought maybe they was going to edit it or whatever. You know, I probably have an appearance. Not like you. So, no. so I'm sitting in there. The first scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Santa Claus cr yeah, climbing yeah. over the fence. And I'm sitting up in there like, man, look at this. No, man. So my kids there. So when, when Santa Claus got hit by the limousine. Right, right. Flipping my kids yeah. started crying. Oh, hell. And they in there, oh, my God, Dad. I'm like, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Right, I'm, okay. Right. I'm here, cry. I'm here, right, right. Don't wow. cry, they cry. <laughs> and everybody know, like, why are these kids crying? Right, right. And then when the lights came on at the end of the movie, people like, you just, right, how right, you right, hear right, you? Right, oh, my God. Right. And, and, and it was a really exciting moment for a city like Birmingham right. to have me in the theater Stood in line, paid for my right, ticket. Right, sure. No, but let me tell you, you were funny. I right. see a lot of people in movies that aren't that funny. Comedians, you know, don't you know? They I right. yeah. You had funny timing, the whole look, the whole thing, falling, getting up and shit, running. It, the whole <laughs> body language was funny. Physical. I had never really seen you that funny. I've seen you in some sitcoms. You were pretty cool in sitcoms, but that day it was yeah. hilarious to me. I was yeah. like the physicality of it. I was like, man, this and boy. Ice Cube let you just kind of rock. Ice Cube see, said, okay, dope. here's what you need to do. That's dope. But I want Ricky Smiley. I put you in this movie. Because I want Ricky Smiley. Wow. And, and I'm going to give uh, uh, a lot of things uh, people don't know. Right. I was supposed to be the pimp and Cat Williams was supposed to be the no. Santa Claus. Hold on, hold on. How'd that go? Okay. No, no that's, what, that's what I auditioned for. I auditioned to be the pimp. The pimp. Yeah, I, the pimp. I, I can't imagine. And then the Cat pimp. Williams was right. going to be Santa Claus. And then somebody in Ice Cube decided to switch it up. Really? No, I didn't give a damn what. Right, I was just happy right, to be in it. Right, you know right, what I'm saying? right, right. So, yeah. How do you think? How did you do an audition at the pimp? You think you, you know? Well, I you, did good. Oh, you you had the part pretty much. You said. Yeah, it was like you did good. Your audition audition was good. Okay. Like we like it. And then they just kept talking. Like like, no, you did good. You did good. You're fine. But we they was thinking, and they said, all right, we 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 gonna call you. And they called him back and say, Rick, can you do the Santa Claus? I'm like, yeah, but you don't have to come back and audition for that. That's easy. It's really not a lot of lines. You really just running, and yeah. it's more physical than anything. Right, right, right. And I got the wind, the Christmas tree scene. Right, right, right. Yeah, Ice right. Cube, boom! Like knocked the wind out of me twice. We had to stop. Really? Oh yeah. See, he don't know that. He, he, he what do you call that? That's character acting, whatever you call yeah. that. But that I should know what the quarterbacks wore because I got the hell. <laughs> right. But it was one. A lot of people don't know about this. When uh, when they got to the house, when Santa Claus got the stuff and got to the house. Mm -hmm. So when Mike Epps and Ice Cube came in there, Mike Epps farted so fucking wow. nasty. Nah. <laughs> Mike they had to stop. No. And Cube got mad. I'm like, <laughs> who the fuck? It was like real eggy. <laughs> it was it was like the nasty, nasty. like like the white dude, the cameraman was. <laughs> oh man! If they couldn't take it, then it was nasty. They were throwing up, man. And and Mike was like, man. 
You know, <laughs> and everybody was like, like Cube got mad. Right, right, and sure. Cube walked out. Sure. Uh, uh, some, right. more, some more people walked out. The white dudes uh, was throwing up. <laughs> Damn. A lot of people don't know behind right, the scenes. Right, 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 right. Mike, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget that smell. Like that smell hit your taste buds. Ooh, ooh. So, so you spend the rest of the day spitting. I'm not a spitter. Uh, right, right. But right. y'all spending the rest of the day. What, what, <laughs> you know how you what, smell what, something what? so bad? You know how you smell <laughs> something so bad? You be spitting for the rest of the day. Like like, right, like right now, I don't even want to swallow. Damn, I can, you can bring that back up? I will up? never forget how that smelled, man. That was like, Mike it was mother. just just raw ass. Rancid, rancid. It was, it was like, it was, it was a dash of cabbage mixed ooh, with ooh. leftover ooh. greens and a, and a couple of boiled eggs. Wow, Mike. Right? Mike Epps, that's the nastiest, <laughs> worst part. I have, I have all uncles. My mother right. have four brothers. Okay, okay. My dad have three brothers. Okay. I've been in rooms with they my, my, the they, best they, they, I had an uncle to play football for Nick State for Alabama. Okay, so he can fart he really football, well. So they always fart. They right. fart in your face. But this particular fart, right. Mike my Epps farted like he went down on a billy goat. Damn. It was just horrible. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Was that, before lunch, that, was that before lunch or after lunch? No, it wasn't no lunch. I, I think oh, they damn. Kept, they cut lunch out? Yeah, bro. People was throwing People was literally throwing up. Come on, now. And Mike Epps don't care. Right, right, right. He don't give a fuck. I, I, he did a radio interview one time, and Mike Epps went to a bathroom and left the door open. He just sat Shit. there. Wow. <laughs> and it's funny. Probably the Mike Epps, that fart wasn't that bad. Right. Because the farter <laughs> never think they fart that bad. Like, man, wait, that bad. He probably hit his interview like, come on, it Pierre, wasn't that bad. Pierre, it was, it was bad. It was bad. It was in your clothes too and shit. I can imagine yeah, that shit. Yeah, yeah, hell no. Yeah, the Santa suit. <laughs> God damn, the Santa suit. It's like when people smoke in the room. Everybody got you go home like, damn, that's like smoke. You smell like you smell like egg and. Uh. They was like, we are gonna take a thirty minute break. And you should have saw the people that worked there. They was coming there. They were spraying. They had all kind of stuff. They were lighting incense candles. Mm -hmm. They had the smoke machine going just all that shit. That's the one thing I remember about Friday after the next. Out of everything we did on Friday after the next, Mike Epps farted, and it was just it was it was something to be reckoned with. Wow, wow, yeah. wow! That was that was the first COVID nineteen. Hell no! <laughs> I love it. I love it. Damn, but yeah, somebody else's fart always smells worse. Always smells worse. Oh yeah. Um, now with all the success that you had, uh, and I'm so proud of you, brother. And I mean this sincere. I'm so proud of you. How do you how do you circumvent like? The jealousy, the haters in this business, because I know I've I've heard them. People don't like you and all that. Ricky did this, Ricky that. How do you? I'm quite sure I got them, but I never your level, because it's Pierre, got to be jealousy, man. Pierre, or they, envy. Black people, it ain't just comedians. Black people don't like boundaries. Ooh. And and I'm one of the type of people. I'm an alpha male. I say what I say. What I say, what I mean. I mean what I say. I'm a grand. I'm a. I am my grandfather's grandson. I was raised by my grandfather. My grandfather was in the military, and that's right. what he taught me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No is no. And I don't owe you an explanation to my no. And a Ooh. lot of people don't like you for that. You know what I'm saying? As, as no, you get no. old, you understand that. Sure, Pierre. sure. I, come on, You man. can't do everything and be everything to everybody and give everybody everything. Still to this day, can I get a picture? No. How are you today? Mm. I have a problem with this generation with entitlement, asking for something without acknowledging the person that you're asking something from. Where the hell is everybody matters? Mm. How, don't put your hand, don't put a phone in my face. Atlanta good for it. Mm. Put a phone in your face, put their hand on your back and pull aggressively. Women, mm -hmm. aggressively, right, right. pull you into right. their camera phone. Right, sure. Don't speak to you, but if we ask them for something, Right, sure. Can sure. I smash? Right, sure, sure. What, can I get a drink? Right, can sure. I get dinner? Right. No, real shit. How are you today? Right. Nice to meet you. Right, right. Your name is. Right. They don't like it and they don't like correction. That's why mm. braces correct the smile. Mm. See, what we're dealing with now while all these shooting, robberies, people going crazy, there's no boundary because correction has been questioned. Ooh. 30 yeah, years ago, remember 30 years ago? Okay. 30 years uh -huh. ago is the beginning of you can't say nothing to nobody kids, right? Mm. Now, what do you have? Half of us ain't going to be looking around, doing like this, going to our car when we walk out of this door tonight. Because one of them ones that you could not correct is going to be out here looking to rob one of these women out here, right? Because they don't like being, I got a lot of family members don't like me mm, really? because I set boundaries. Right, sure. You understand? And, and I get women attack me for raising my grandson. 
Cause he, cause, cause he cute and he got curly hair. Why do you have him out there, uh, raking leaves? Really, you think he's because, only but Pierre? You would not. But you think it's because they light skin and curly hair? They they tripping on that? Pierre, come on, Ricky. In the in in, I'm telling you, I even in the family, you can't correct the niece, you can't correct the nephew. I told my sister when I'm talking to my nephew. If you can't handle it, you need to get out and go in another room mm. because it takes iron to sharpen iron. Mm -hmm. And I'll never let a woman oversee me correcting the man because when my daughters got their period, mm -hmm. I stepped out of the room. That's not my place. I don't use a pad, right? So that's, that's their mother's job to teach them how to use a pad, a sanitary napkin, sure, sure. and to, to be a woman. So when I'm t t talking to my son, I don't need no female interference. If you can't handle what a football coach is doing on the football field, if you can't take it, then you need to leave practice and drop them off and leave. Right. I get that, Ricky. But I yeah. feel like the problem, because what you're angling is a lot of women. Men aren't being in the lives of these women, so they're not, men ain't around to, to, to help it's control. A lot of so if men ain't around, then well, women got to do that. Women ain't built to take care of a raise a boy. Pierre, it's a new day. Fathers are, fathers are here. Fathers are here to stay. Father, okay. They got all kind of father's rights movements. I go to them. I'm a part of it. Okay. I had to go to court to get custody of my son. Okay. I had custody of all my kids. I raised my kids, right? Okay. There are so many dads out there. And the reason, the, the, some of them, there are dead be dead. But the re, you know why the reason a lot of them are not there? Why? Because they're being undermined and kept away from by the mother because the relationship didn't work out. Okay. And okay. that's a fact. I can mm -hmm. give you stats on mm -hmm. that. It's so many father's rights movements. It's so many judges that's being so unfair to men. Why do we have to get fucking... Can, no, me, all right. We why do we have to fucking get visitation for a child that's 50% ours? Mm. Why, do, why, do, why does some white man sitting on the bench get to tell a black man that he get to only see his son every first first and third weekend is that fair well no hold on but how about you and the woman ain't got no relationships or got a, a you know bad relationship you can't just pop up when you want to she has a life to live too so if i'm raising a child i'm a female you can't, just can't say on saturday at 12 o'clock i'm coming over like hold on i got things to do too well, yeah, so how do you make that work if yeah. we ain't if me and the woman ain't together or or, or on the same page what somebody got to set the bound right. like that, boundaries or right. you can come over between this and this here what i'm saying is is it should be more than first and third weekend and two weeks in the summer. That's standard visitation in most states, right? Right. Right. Because if a child 14, 15, 16 years old, what the hell is first and third? That's 24. How many hours? That's 48 hours. Two 48 hours in a month for a man to be trying to raise his son. Right, right. I mean, not, not, and, it's, and it's not fair. As long as the man wants to be in a relationship, it wants to Absolutely. be there. Absolutely. But, but most men do. Really? Absolutely, Pierre. I'm okay, telling you, I've okay. been out there with him. Okay. I've, 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 I've been a part of the father's rights movement. I had to work hard to get custody of, you know, my right. son. I have custody of my grandson. Right, right, My grandson, right. five years old. Not because right. his mother won't right, or right. whatever, but he got daddy issues. He never, you know, met his, uh, met his dad before. But his mother feel like, you know, uh, I think he should, I think you should raise him because He's going to be a man, and I like the way I was raised, and I want you to have the same thing for him because I can't do it like you. Right. Or whatever, so oh, right. I have not Right, right. That's, but, that's good. That's, that's but, good. But, but when it comes to boundaries and, and, and people, man, a lot of people don't like you, Pierre, just with comedy, singing, whether you work at the bank, whether you're a pastor, seems like people don't like no. Okay, okay you're right. Now, let me – because I want to get to that. because. Yeah. You know, behind the closed doors, I've heard people say, well, Ricky's arrogant. He don't take pictures. He's all standoffish and shit like that. So you just kind of said what it was. So if someone came at you right way, would you take a picture then? or you Absolutely, just don't know? all the time. And give me, give an and, example and, and, of and a right way. And the difference between asking for something right. or asking for something in front of other people is called being put on the spot. But when you want somebody to do something for you, you ask people in private and you put people to the side to ask for what you want. Right? If I give you, I work at Foot Locker. Okay, right, right. Hey, man, what's up with the discount? You can't ask that in front of everybody. That makes sense, right. Well, what's up with my discount? Right. So it's a lot of common sense and common courtesy. I, I respect that, that's that. missing. But Ricky, when you get off the show, everyone's mm -hmm. around you. How is somebody going to say, Ricky, come over here? I'm asking for a picture. You're, you're around everybody. So how am I get to Ricky smiling well, by if himself? Well, if, if, if I'm going to take one, if I'm going to take one, I'll take one with everybody. I, I've done I, it with I, you I do that. I right, do that right, all the time. Right, but we know. I do that all. But right. sometimes I say no when it's not when it's in a space where. I can't take pictures. I can't do it for everyone. Right, I get that. And I have to I say no. That. And some people respect right. it. 
and some people get mad. Sure, and, sure. And they turn no into arrogance or no into mean. Like even when I came here today, I shook everybody's hand. Sure. I was nice. That's the real me. Right. Right. You know, but but sometimes when it get when when it comes to some people, cause everybody that's out there are not like the people that work here. Right. Some people man, real real aggressive. Right. right. And they they just kind of uh, they they are entitled. Entitlement is the new jealousy. <laughs> now, 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 I like that because yeah. because it's funny. I take pictures with people. Well, here's a couple of things I ask. I say just have the camera ready. You know your phone right. ready. If you're not the one that you you normally use the phone. Teach the person that's using it, cause I don't want to hold you and stand there no, like, I got you. and stand there and I'm stand there. For, you know and what I do? There. What? I grab their phone, put it on selfie, boom, give it back to them. You put it on what? Put it on selfie. I grab it, right? Boom, cause you get the control and you do it quick. So okay. now you're not standing there holding them, right, right, for five right, minutes, right. And uh, while they uh, waiting on the other person to figure it out, so I boom, hand it to them. I say, everybody, put your phone on selfie, line up. When you get to me, hand me your phone. Boom, thank you. Boom, thank you. Boom, 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 boom. move. Right. You know, keep it moving because right. it, it, there's a lot of people that'll wear you down. So you just have to come up with a system to get every, give everybody what they want. So, right. you know what I'm saying? Let me say, for me, it used to mm -hmm. bother me when somebody said something negative about me, whatever. Because yeah. I was like, that's not really me. Like, I don't know, you know, because people take anything. Like, say, I'm running to an airport and I'm trying to get to a plane. I'll take a picture with somebody. Oh, he bad, he asshole. And they'll, you know, talk about me. I'm like, no, I was getting on the plane. Like I, I take pictures all the time, but that yeah. one person you don't take a picture with, oh yeah, th that's the one gonna spread it. He ain't shit. Like okay, you I just took they, twenty you know pictures, they, man. The one I, I'm sorry I didn't get to you, but I gotta go. You know, you know what I do when they go live on me? I what? go live back on them. Ooh. Oh yeah, hold up now, hold up now. You oh yeah, I'm sitting up there in the airport, <laughs> and you sitting there filming me. I take my phone and I film you. So I walk up to a woman one day. I'm like, okay, let me ask you something. I love it. I said, how does this make you feel? Ooh. I said, I was over there having a cup of coffee, waiting to get on the plane. I wasn't bothering nobody. You start filming me. How does it make you feel? Right. But right? Feel, right. See, see, it's different when the, when the rabbit got the gun. Right, right. And now sure. she started covering up, and now you feel uncomfortable. Right. I said, that's how I felt right. when you was filming me. You didn't come over. You didn't say, hi, I enjoy your work. Nice to meet you. I would have said, nice to meet you. Is there anything you need? Can I buy you breakfast? Damn. I am a gentleman Shit. first. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, but I will buy, buy, buy here, breakfast, nigga? Yeah, yeah, I will. I take a picture. Nigga. You know how many bacon, egg, and sandwich, bacon, egg, and cheese biscuits I've bought over I the years? That. I can believe I that. I bought a lot of bacon, egg, and especially at Hardee's. I'm not taking down the Hardee's. <laughs> that's what we're we doing. Hardy's of the deal. Hey, meet Ricky at the Hardy's. If you meet want that free bacon, I'll egg. buy you a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit. Right. I have an account there. Right, right. I pay the bill right. every month. But uh, I just, I'm just really structured, Pierre, and ain't nothing wrong with it. And everybody need to be structured. Everybody need to do what work for them. You can't make everybody right. happy. Nick Saban said, "It takes a real man to be leadership to have to, to be. Uh, it takes a, a man to for leadership. Right. Sure. Sure. If right. you want to make everybody happy, sell ice cream. I heard that. That's if you want to make everybody happy, sell ice cream. And you are not put on this earth for everybody to like you. Okay. And all money ain't good money. And right. all fans are not good fans. Ooh. I tell some people, hey, Ooh. don't ever support me. Because you'll never, don't right, ever right. support me. Keep, right. If you got to be like this, right, right. I feel keep you. your money. Right, right. You got other comedians out there that need support that might get put up with some of that stuff, what you own. Right. But I'm not on that, and you don't run me. Right. I'm no, the I boss like of me. Oh, I know that. Okay. okay. And I mean it in a real a, a real nice way, because I'm, I'm a real nice person. Pierre, we go and deliver toys at 3 o'clock in the morning to probably 20 families every Christmas. We walking in projects. Right. We buying mattresses, sheets. End up going back the next day buying basic necessities. We do community but service. But that's why people think you're so approachable. Some people might think yeah. you're nice and be like, let me approach you. And if you give them that, eh, you ain't approaching yeah, me right. Gotta, then it's like, damn, you gave out toys. You can't take a picture. You got to be respectful, P.I. All right, that's, that's all. it. That, that, okay, Just be okay. respectful. Because a lot of times people think that because I know you and I support you, you, I owe, you owe you me. You still got to be respectful. Right. No, no, you're right. Because I'm like, hold on. You know, uh, uh, fair exchange ain't no robbery. I gave you good comedy. You enjoyed it. We even at a point now. Picture is extra. Right. If I do that for you, I don't owe you a picture. Right. Because do you owe me some ass, girl? You fine. As hell, I want some ass. Right, okay? you take a picture. We get some ass. Well, I ain't about all that shit. I don't know about no ass shit. Oh, what shit? What my picture, I what right. I my picture is valuable to ass. Okay, that's what I. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying to me. So if you don't want a picture with me, cool. But if you want one, I might want some ass. All right. So, that, so right. here we go. <laughs> shit. The fuck, but, you know? but 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 most of the people that I meet, man, are, are really really nice. And what I do now, I just set it up when I take pictures. Right. And it's, it's just really really controlled. Well, I can give everybody what they want and make sure all the customers are happy right. or whatever. But every now and then you get that one drunk or entitled or whatever that just over the top and just be doing. Everybody got 
every situation, somebody decide to do the most. Right. right. And when they Are decide right? to, do, right? to do the most, you have to correct. And, and correction is not braces hurt, right? Right. right. But they but, but they, 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 they correct right, the right, smile. Right. 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 And 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 so now what's happening is correction is always being questioned and challenged. Let me ask you a question. Do you feel that more with us opposed to white audiences? It's uh, a different mood to me. Uh what what you mean like? As far as your space and all that and and cuz I have people I sell a, I have a book and nigga my book is $20 dollars my nigga give it to me for $10. See, I said, nigga see, I can cut it in half for you nigga, don't you know. Get, don't get me white folks don't do that. that. They just buy it, you know, you Let know? me tell you something. Let me tell you something about our people, and it makes me mad. Ooh. And I don't care. If, I don't care who get mad. Right. I say it what I say it, right. and I know what I'm talking about, and I'm right. Right. Black people will go to Phelps Plaza, okay, and pay whatever the asking AC. price is for a Gucci bag. Yep. And we'll go to a HBCU game, okay, and negotiate. Oh yeah. A twenty five dollar, AKA T shirt. Ain't that trip? You know. It's, it's it's, it's, yeah, I used yeah. to sell prank phone call CDs. Or whatever, the price is twenty dollars. Mm. It's not negotiable. That's mm. what the price is. Right. It's just a mindset that what. And, and I'm, I'm talking about for real. I've seen it with my own eyes. Oh, I've, I've, I've experienced it. Those tables. We sell stuff at the show mm -hmm. in the stuff that we have to deal with. But I've never seen nobody ask for a discount at Phipps Plaza. No, you're right. You're right. Or at the Nike store. Home Depot. Yeah, or yeah. at Home right, Depot. Right, right. They'll pay what they say. You says. pay the price. And right. they, as soon as they scan it, you good. You swipe your Why credit card. Why do we like that? Why do we do that It's to just each other? like sometimes man, our people feel like uh, since I'm black and you black right. or whatever, let me get a discount. It's like the hustle. Here right. comes the hustle. Just because I'm black. I think when it comes to white folks, we got a little at, fear. Look on the internet. Everybody posting stuff like, my price is my price. Right. You seen the new videos, right, the right. new the new uh, TikToks? Right. My price is, is my price. price. If my price too high, they make that video for a reason, man. They get tired of folks. You got black folks out here baking cakes. Black mm -hmm. people got food trucks, asking people to come. Like, like you get people, hey, can you come do a comedy show? Well, here's my price. Well, right. all I need you to say, hey, right. hey, 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 hey. <laughs> if I walk That's out right. my front door, this, this is, is the price. price. So there you might is. as well let me do whatever you, you need me do. to do because this is what the price is. Mm. In your long career, have you had any regrets you think? You ever have any regrets that you should have did something or said something or did something that you didn't like to do, you know? Uh, I probably should have went, uh, well, I ain't going to say, uh, oh, go to L no, I was going to say go to L.A. Uh I really don't, uh, not 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 for real. The only regrets I have, I think I, I wish I would have spent more time with my uh, with my kids. Career wise, it just worked out. God has just been good. Pierre, uh, I was doing comedy, still playing the organ at mm -hmm. church, and the industry has been good to me. Pierre, I don't have no regrets. Uh, I just wish I would have met a lot more people like you and George Wallace and Carl Strong. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, different people that have given me opportunities, man. Uh, the kings of comedy. Everybody's been good to me. Everybody's been nice. Uh, I've had some, I made some bad management decisions. Mm. People that was managing my career. I've had people steal money. Really? Uh, oh, yeah. Managers and shit? Millions. Millions. How, okay, I'm going to go into detail, but how could you avoid, how, so for the next, for the young comic out there, whatever, how would you avoid, how can a comic avoid that don't, not happening? Don't, 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 don't do business with nobody with a smile and make everything sound good and don't tell you the bad side. Everything that sounds good, all that slick, jivey, fast talking, I got this client, I met this person, that, 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 that name dropping, everything. I, man, I get real, if you want to make me mad, start talking smooth to me like that. Mm. That slick, jivey ass talking, <laughs> make everything sound good, cool. and I got that and that. Right. Cause guess what, the people that's really doing it, they don't even do that. Listen to this. Wow. Over here doing the Mar Lawrence tour, probably the biggest check I got per night, right? Mm -hmm. You don't even see the damn person who, who, gave the check, who, right? who write the check. You right. don't even know who write the check, it just appears in your bank, uh, right. bank account. You got all your money before you perform, right? Then somebody that's paying you this much money, you got to be bothered with them right, all right, week, right. and then you don't get up. Wow, wow! It don't make me bitter. Right. I just, I just had to make more, better decisions with management, dealing with certain CPAs, people, or whatever. And uh, David E. Talbert saved my life. What? David E. Talbert. How you say And Lan Talbert. Okay. He said, "Hey man, he saw something that I was going through with some management." He said, man, come out to L.A. and have lunch with me. I got on the plane and flew to L.A. He had a guy named Alan Nevins. Okay. White dude. That's a, um, what do you call people that do book deals? A, a, not, not a publisher, but a, a, 
A nigga that do book deals. Book deals, right. right. Uh, book deal guy. Uh, damn, I can't think of that. It was book right deal guy. The, uh, right. <laughs> he said, hey, this this is you need to manage you. Name Alan Nevins. Okay. Alan got in there, got all my stuff cleaned up, took me over to this lady named Laura Liza House. She has a big clientele, as an older white lady. That's a mathematician. We 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 got on Southwest Airline and flew from from Atlanta to L.A. on Southwest Airline, and the middle seat was empty, and we had the overhead being full of boxes with my taxes and all this stuff or whatever, and we was going through papers on the plane. Wow. That that five hour flight seemed like thirty minutes. My stuff was bad. Wow. I owed I owed one point five million dollar. I had a one point five million dollar tax debt. What well, what year was this? Uh, what career wise? I don't know what you were looking at. Last seven, week, seven, no. right? Seven years ago. <laughs> okay, so seven years. Wow, wow. You were really big, rich now. Yeah, why you yeah, doing? Yeah, put me with the right. I had stuff, you know. Put me with the right people. Got my business together, or whatever. Got my new radio deal, right. or whatever, which I just signed a five year deal with Urban Urban One, and got all of my stuff together. And now I'm set to retire. I can retire right now. Right. But how does Ricky Smiley get into a 1.1 1. 1, 1. 1 million? People not, pay, people not paying your taxes. Uh, people making withdrawals. People. What? Uh, yeah. yeah. So you relied on another person to pay your taxes and they just didn't pay them? Yeah, but because we com we, we comedians. You're yeah, busy, we, right, we right. Performing. We, we performing. We think you got stuff. All the celebrities, everybody went through it. Right, right. A lot of people, well, yeah. And stuff. You don't know. We don't do taxes. We're not mathematicians. We're conscious. Right. But how do you now make sure that it doesn't happen again? You know, because. She um, sent that weekly report. You get that weekly report every week. In so you tell. Okay. She okay. sent it right to your phone. Here's what went out. Here's what came in. Every check I get right now, 45%, not even 50% goes straight to the IRS. The IRS owe me money. Damn. I get an income tax check now. Cause, oh, cause, wow. Because if, uh, if, I, if I do a show for $500, Two hundred and fifty dollars going out of it immediately to the IRS, right? Wow, okay, okay. So now I get a, I get a check. I get something back, and when I get that back, I sign it and send it back. So before that, I, I stay ahead of the game. I love it. I love government smart. owe me money now. Damn, but but that? that's just getting with with people that are smart mathematicians. I have a mathematician, uh, a CPA firm here in Atlanta, and this lady. Uh, she wear glasses and she's really, really quiet, but she is a math genius. Nice. And you go in the office and she got all that stuff on the wall, all that big clientele mm -hmm. uh, of, of A-list celebrities that she, right. they she do did. their taxes and stuff. It's a, it's a reason why a lot of certain uh, people are not In having tax, tax problems. Right. So the person because the IRS don't like celebrities because they, they, they just don't. Right. They're going to go at them hard. So the person that was doing your taxes before, you got that off of TV at one eight hundred number or some shit. <laughs> that, 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 and that who put you like at one point one million. Seems like it. Damn. So, okay. But but God is good. Okay. You know God is good, man. But because uh, God God give you another opportunity to to fix it and to make it right. Right. So now you older, you wiser, you know better. And we, and I tell and I coach young comics now. All these comedians, I say, who's your CPA? Are you paying your tax? That's my conversation. I don't care about how funny you are. All of them are funny. Mm -hmm. But let's That's talk business. Let's sit down and let's get That's into good. it That's good or whatever. Know. And then set yourself up with a check and balance. Mm. Check and balance. That's right. one thing Gary Abdo taught me. Where's your money? Gary Abdo used to. Runs used the to, comedy he, club out here in Atlanta. He runs the comedy club. Mm -hmm. Man, he used to be in my ass. Where's your money? Mm. Here's, here's, here's what I booked. Here's what you made or whatever. Where's your money? Like or whatever, I learned a lot, lot from really, him. Really, so, right, right, uh, right, right. And I really appreciate everything he did. Right, but, right. Uh, the stuff that I went through, I didn't have a perfect career. Mm. Well, I, well, oh yeah. Outside looking in, it looked good. It looked really good. You know, you, you know, looked a lot better than some people's career. <laughs> to be real, yeah. you know, you were lucky enough to your talent just you know superseded it to where it would help you out every time. When you hit something hard, rock bottom, yeah. your talent got you to keep on working. You know, and the fans did that for. They kept yeah. supporting you. There was times when you probably you know had to go do these shows just to pay these bills. Like really, and people didn't know that. You know, they're just seeing you up on stage. He's doing it. Other comics envious and jealous. Hey, you know, up With there. The court, what you got doing? Sued. Yeah, see everything. You know, you changed. Man, Management, they get mad and sue you like a whole oh, lot. Oh, yeah, man. man. You have to go oh, through yeah. that stuff, and then you have to get past, and you have to keep moving.
Right. You know, right, I know right. a lot of comics that's on a list that, that that had to go to court and right. and settle stuff out of court or whatever, and don't even have the money to settle. But you just hey hey, I can go do a comedy club. I can I can have it settled. I can have all that stuff paid off right. in in six months. But you know, God just allowed me to have a a, a, a nice career. I didn't want to be as famous as as Kevin Hart ever. I just want to be really. Nah, nah, that, that's a lot. That's a lot because you know you you working a lot. You got kids or whatever. This medium fame right here, wherever I am, I love mm. this space because I have enough space to be with my grandkids. Nice. Right? I don't perform in the summer anymore. This is the fourth year I have not done. What? I t- yeah, yeah. I, I don't do shows from wow. the third weekend in May until the third weekend of August. I do not perform. I was sitting in Atlanta airport looking on Facebook, people at weddings. I can't go to funerals in the summer if somebody in my family died because I got to go do a show because right. I'm booked oh, wow. and the flight's messed up. I can't go to the funeral and running out of the church trying to. Sure. I just stopped performing in the summer. And I started going to the to the beach on the weekend and just having a weekend sitting at home. So now I'm funnier because my brain is having an opportunity to, to rest. rest. Wow. That's so you a, get okay. your vacation in the summer and the weekend off. And you, 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 I go fishing. I go to the Bahamas. I drive. I'm a captain. I fly planes, taking flying lessons. Hell I can fly. No. I can fly a plane. Uh, I'm a boat captain. Okay. I, I navigate. I have got in a boat by myself and went across the Atlantic Ocean and drove myself to the Bahamas by myself. Okay. Well, damn. Okay. Swim See. with swim with sharks. All this crazy wild stuff. You well, gonna do it this summer because you're going. I, I, I feel you are from, going. You I are from, Mer- from from Baltimore to South. Uh, You're going west to do some do this show. So You're I did going. that. Okay, I got Pierre, on Southwest. You promise me. You you we going. We hey, already you have, have a date. You invite me a couple of times. You ain't never let me go. Yeah, but you're going. We already have a date. We have a date. We have a date. It's in the summer. We're going to Bum. We're going to the Bahamas. You gonna well, see? Well, I, I'm gonna let you drive. Uh, damn. Okay. Once you get out on the ocean, you put it on autopilot. The boat going. The steering wheel gonna lock up, and the boat gonna go all the way to the Bahamas anyway. Well, okay, okay. You just have you just have to avoid the cargo ships and the cruise ships. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, okay. Well, you, well, you during the summertime when you chilling. If I ain't working that weekend, I'll come, nigga. I right. need the money. Okay, I'm still working in the summertime, so you can move me. I'm setting up a show Bro. in Bimini Bahamas. Bimini is Baha- Bimini Bahamas. Let's go. Is the closest island of the Bahamas to the United States. Is where Dr. King used to hang out to get okay. away okay. from everything. It's only 55 miles from Fort Lauderdale and 50 miles from Miami, and it's just a straight shot. If you got a nice day, you got a good weather day, you jump on the boat, go across nice. the ocean, and go to Bim. I tell you what, let's get your crew together. Let's uh-huh. shoot an episode in Bimini. Okay. I dare you to put all your folks <laughs> Don't, on the yeah. boat. Hey, if y'all want to go, oh, we can take a whole weekend. We can do it during the week or whatever. Get your cameras and stuff. Pack it up, and we'll go across the ocean, and we'll shoot this sitting on the beach. Damn. Uh, That'll be good because you'll cut you will cut this part of the show right. and cut right into us sitting on the back. And then go right back. Come right back. Come right back. <laughs> no. All right. <laughs> Let me ask you, on, on your on your epitaph, what would you want people to know? Ricky Smiley did what? When time when this is all if it's ended tomorrow, what would you want people to know as you as a person on your on your Man, I really got behind a lot of uh black judges that was running and I used my platform to get people elected. Uh, from 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 Barack Obama, I was mm. on the radio at the time. The interviews. Uh, I had the president of the United States call me one day, Barack, uh, when President Obama was in office, mm-hmm. because he was nervous about Florida. Uh, he really needed those uh, electoral oh, sure. college votes. Sure. I was literally on my boat, and uh, my phone rang, and I answered and said, "Hey, is this Ricky Smiley? Is this, we have the president of the United States?" And I had to turn the engines off, and I had to get my boat pointed where it wouldn't mm-hmm. rock. Right. So I had to I had to wow. get the steering wheel pointed with the waves coming this way where it wouldn't because your boat gets sideways you get to rocking. Okay. So you have to. We don't to, we don't know this. Most of us don't. Yeah, know yeah. This. But everybody yeah. anybody yeah. that go fishing yeah. know what I'm talking about. So I had to get the boat. <laughs> so I had to be still, and I had to sit there and have a conversation with the president. I said, "What's what's?" I said, "What's going on?" Wow. He said, "Ricky, I'm nervous about Florida." I said, "Why are you nervous about Florida, Mr. President?" He said that uh he said we have the votes, Ricky. We just need turnout. I said, Mr. President, I need you to come on my radio show uh, Monday wow. and let's blow it up. And I blew it up for him and Florida came out. As a matter of fact, so many people came out when they called the election, when they called Florida for Barack Obama, black folks refused to get out of line and they looking at the TV and Barack Obama had won, was reelected when he ran against Mitt Romney 
and people refuse to get out of line. So oh. Kamala Harris, uh, Joe Biden, Barack Obama, uh, Senator, uh, um, uh, oh yeah, man, uh, shout out to J.B. Smooth That's for right. winning the Senate seat in Georgia. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, you wrong for that, dog. I'm about to say you wrong for that. <laughs> he do look like JB. I'm about to say JB won that. You are dirty. You dirty for that. He said, <laughs> "What's the guy's real name?" <laughs> Rep yeah, Warnock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But all the little JB Caesars look. commercials that Rep yeah, Warnock is doing oh, now, wow. we real no, proud no, of really, that. Really, really. See how I flipped that thing. You, dirty. you see how I flipped that thing. <laughs> he, he split, he's splitting time between running to Georgia and that. Uh, you funny. Right. You funny. <laughs> You funny, that's funny. He do look like he that. Do, he, he do, he do. Because I posted I post the picture when he won. I posted a picture of J.B. Smooth. Oh, said, shit. congratulations to Raphael Warner. That's funny. <laughs> and Dion shared it on his Instagram. That's funny, but, uh, that's funny. Uh, but yeah, man, to get people elected, man, and a lot of black judges, man, uh, uh, that we help get elected. Because that's important. Not just the presidential election. It's those midterm elections and when those yeah. judges run because that's where it affect you directly. Real talk. And all of the Deltas and the AKAs and the Zetas and the Sigma Gamma Rose, the only thing I want to see now is a black woman sitting on the United States Supreme Court. Mm. That's what I need to see. And that was the only thing that I was just kind of hoping that uh, Barack Obama did or whatever. But uh, it has never been a black woman sitting on the United States Supreme Court. But uh, uh, that's but getting helping a lot of black women get elected wow. to the bench okay. was something was one of the most important things that I ever done. Forget comedy, forget the TV shows, forget the movies. The people we fed, the people we clothed, the people we educated, the people we bought tombstones for. Parents that have kids wow, have gotten yeah. killed. Man, I got accounts with funeral homes all over the country, man. And the, these people that I bought caskets and tombstones for don't even know that I bought it. I get calls from funeral homes sometimes. Uh -huh. Say, Ricky, I got a mother down here. Sixteen-year-old son got killed. They don't have no insurance. Here's the funeral calls, Rick. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in five hundred. I'm like, okay, I'm good for for fifteen hundred to go ahead and pay for that, pay for the opening and closing. Like for years and years and wow. years and years and years and years, I've been doing this stuff. Pierre, if I was stingy, I would be a very rich man right now. Everything that I have ever gotten, Pierre, I have given it all away. Wow, I didn't know Giving that. it all away. And and you know, but but God God always take care of me. Yeah, sure. Because sure, God yeah. used me as a vessel to do some of his work. Yeah. You understand what no, I'm no, saying? I, I get it. I get a it. A pond stink because it holds water, but a river flows. A river flows. You understand? So when when, when, yeah, when yeah. those blessings flow, man, you you just you bless people. No, no, no. And I, you I, have to find I, out how to bless people without getting mistreated or get used. And sometimes you can't let everybody know that you bless them because sometimes folks turn into cats and then they get attached to you and they want something else. Mm -hmm. Here's for you. I got one family member. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's going on with auntie? Well, auntie can't pay a light bill, whatever. Okay, here's some money. Go pay the light bill. Don't even tell her that I did it. Go down to the power company. Boom, boom, boom. All of a sudden, she's shouting in church because she thank God worked a miracle. Well, he did through you. Yeah, he did. Yeah, through but, you. But she yeah. don't know I did it. Right. So now I don't have to be bothered with her next month when she can't. Oh, yeah. well, that's what I, I was going to ask you why don't you tell people. But that's No, good. no. Because, cause Pierre, if you tell them, yeah. and, and, and and trust me, sometimes, man, it's just best. Even when I send money to Africa, uh, 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 mm. you know, for the kids. I, I, I sponsor a girl's school in Africa. Damn, okay. We pay for the food. We pay for the guy to take to grow the food. We pay for. We built them a whole water. Nice. Now they have fresh water or whatever. Now they know we do it or whatever. Sure. And they always send thank you videos. I do it with a pastor, uh, Pastor Walter Solomon, and he goes to Africa and we give him money, and we supply all of the stuff for the school over here. So we do a lot of work in the community. And and Pierre, if you don't remember nothing else about me, I don't care about no none of this stuff. This is just our job. But I do all of this. Where I can do this. That's what's important. Wow. What are they gonna say about you when that casket yeah, is laying in sure, front of that pulpit? Sure, sure. You know what I'm saying? If 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 folks ain't fighting to get to that microphone to just express for just two minutes on how you have impacted their yes, life, yes. then you have wasted time on earth. Wow. That's heavy. That's you know heavy. what I'm saying? No, 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 no. And no, that's no. what it's all about. But but, but but why how how did this come out? Have you always been like as a kid? I've been like this my you? whole life. Really? Is it Pierre, your before, mother, your father? What gave it to you? Pierre, I was in Big Brothers of America program before I started doing comedy. Because I, because wow. my dad got killed when I was six. Mm. And it is devastating to see a child grow up without a dad. Sure. So I go out here. I've been mentoring little boys. And, you know, people, 
you know, some sometimes if you don't date the mama or whatever, then right. you know, and, and sometimes you get undermined, uh, you know, because sometimes you you helping a woman out with her kids and she get jealous of the relationships and withdraw the kids. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I've had it happen, and then the undermine process starts. I have several degrees on the wall, not mine. Kids I put through college, they all send me their degrees. Wow. I have a doctor that operate on your eyes, an uh, uh, ophthalmologist. I have uh, uh, a lot of degrees on the wall. I have uh, a running back coach right now. I've raised two college athletes out of the house that play NCAA uh, basketball. My son is a junior at Alabama State University on the basketball team. My daughter's a junior at Baylor. My other daughter just graduated Tennessee State University communications major. I'm pro education. Wow. And I'm pro God. And uh, and that's it for me. Man, you've done well, Ricky. Man, I mean, really, you really. I I'm, I've learned more about you now than I've uh, known before. And I've known you for thirty years. But you yeah, know, like I said, we don't talk every day. But whenever it is, it's love. I really care about you. I really think you're a cool person. I've defended you when people said stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, no, nah, man. I know Ricky. You know, and people act like you got to be saintly or you know be the perfect person. Man, it's like, man, come ain't on, no dude. People, man, let them people talk. Oh, Cause, uh, cause, cause uh, guess what? Guess yeah. what? I'm gonna shut up and I'm gonna say it when I say this. Guess who ain't saying all that stuff? Who? <laughs> people that matter. Ooh. Ooh, you heard that I want again. everybody. Heard I want everybody here to remember that when all these people start talking <laughs> about you, when all everybody, everybody that's watching right now, when all these people got all this stuff to say about you, the people that saying this, that saying saying this stuff, they ain't ex- as successful as you. They're not making what you make. Hmm. Barack Obama never said it about me. Hmm. Kamala Harvey? Harris has hmm. never said uh-huh. it. Steve Harvey has never said it. Pierre has never right, said it. Right. Right? Right, sure. Right? Rita Brent has never said it. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have never said it. Right? People that make decisions, people that matter. My mama ain't never said it. All the people that I've educated, they never said it. I love it. I love it. You understand? It makes sense. So when people, when you start looking at who's saying it, the people that's coming to all the comedy clubs and all the sold out shows where I'm still selling out, they don't feel that way. That's a very small demographic of Negroes that didn't get, either didn't get what they want or get the picture that they want or got fired, uh, whatever, because they didn't take advantage of the opportunity or whatever. And those are the people that don't like you. Somebody that you didn't take a picture with, somebody that you said no to for something. Or right? comedian you ain't right? help, you know. Right? Or somebody that you didn't you help. help right. Not help, because I help them all. Who you didn't help enough Ooh. or stop helping. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Ooh, watch had, out now. I done had people make whole Facebook videos. Oh, I saw uh, a couple of them. Uh, yeah, yeah, who I, who I, but it started out with me giving you an opportunity. Right. I got fired from the Dub Banks Morning Show. Listen to this. I got fired okay. from the Dub Banks Morning Show. Guess what I did after I got fired? I sent him a long text message. Doug, he dead and gone. God rest his soul. Right. I just want to take Thanks. this opportunity. Thank you for everything you ever done for me and allowing me to you, be on your morning show, I'm saying what having I'm a right. platform to do my characters. If there's anything you need, and and I'll do it for free. Mm-hmm. If you come to Birmingham and need anything, feel free to call me. Mm. And again, I love you and I appreciate the opportunity. That's, That's what I said. Right, right. Instead of being mad about being Some fired. people spit on the way out. Ooh. Because you have to watch it because you might have to go back. Ooh. That wind blow like that. You know where you been, mm-hmm. but you don't know where you're going. And you don't know who you might need. So you have to be mindful. If this opportunity don't work out, it didn't work out because God might have something bigger for you. And remember this, everything is only a test. Sometimes God want to test your temper, your temperament, to see how you're going to handle the situation Ooh. before he bless you with something else. Ooh-wee. Is this Sunday? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now it is. Shit, wow. But, but that's that's deep. No man, it so is. So you get fired from something. How are you going to handle it? Because mm-hmm. your attitude determines your altitude. Right. Sure. And a really, mm-hmm. ro- lot of reasons a lot of us not growing because our attitudes are so bad. Mm-mm, mm-mm. No, 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 you're so right. Even to me, I have like had relationships that bro- broke apart. Say you know, business relationships or whatever. And I was kind of upset. I used to be a vengeful person. A vengeful, right. vengeful. You know, like you do that to me, I'm doing it to you. Uh, but now I had to realize, you know, Pete, let it go, move on. You know what Afro Liggins yeah. taught me? You know what Afro Liggins is? No, no, he Afro. owns Radio One and owns TV One. Okay. Never get mad at anyone for making a business decision Vision. that best suits their yeah. business. It ain't nothing personal. It's business. Right, right. Sure. No, no. Sure. Sure. No, I like that. I like that. 
Well, damn, well, shit, okay. Well, speaking of that, <laughs> let me tell you, let's, let's, let's lighten it up a little bit. I, I feel good, but uh, we, so what we do sometimes on here, we go through your IG page. We do a thing called IG creeping. Come on. Okay, that means we go to your page and see what you about. And I want to talk about this picture <laughs> right here. God <laughs> damn. Hey, I ain't seen Ooh, no period. Wait, that's like, I haven't boy, seen boy, that. You, boy, you look, you're out here looking like, uh, what's that, Shaft and the, the boy, new Shaft. Man, like... who could this dude play in a movie? What, what character could this dude be? Yeah, that's that's on some. Uh, that's, a, that's a dope look. Yeah, that, that's that's some, fresh. something with like somebody that know Denzel. Well, okay, okay. Look at that. What, what kind of, what kind of shoes we got in here? What, what is boy, that? I never seen. Red, them 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 tears, boy. What, what I've never seen them before. Yeah, boy. Them, boy, them look them at, tears, look, boy. look at that. Look, look at the collar. Look at the cuff and shit, man. Boy. Would you? Would yeah, you I haven't seen that, that one though. Would you really wear that out? You go out with that. What would you go out with that? I would have wore that. I would have wore that on stage in Detroit. I know that's right. I, I could have right. got away with that on stage. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. do that in the comedy club, but I'll do that on the big stage if I'm hosting. I wouldn't headline in that because I get hot because right. I'm a physical comedian. Right, right. But, but I'll rock that though. But you would step out with a young lady with that outfit, right? To dinner or something? Would that be something? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's a killer right there, bro. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Thank you, man. Yeah, no, no, man. Thank you for putting that on. But we got other pictures now. You, Come on. you ain't going to thank me all the time. Well, hat die. Woo! Okay, okay. Mama I, Shaft? That's Mama Shaft. Who that right there? Is your, your mom's? That's my grandma. A grandma. And I'm okay. going to tell you something. Everybody got mad at Monique, right? Okay. For talking about. The hair Women in the airport. Right, with the bonnets and stuff. Uh -huh. Guess what we was doing right there? We had just got off a plane in L.A. going to changing planes in LAX going to San Diego. When you got on the plane, that's how you had to dress right, back I'm, in I'm about the to say, day. come on now. I'm, that's, I'm about that's me and my grandmother flew from Birmingham to L.A., from L.A. to San Diego. Look at Granny. And that's where, my grandma, man, my grandmother was classy. She was cold with it. Was she cold with it? My grandmother was classy. That's Maddie Smiley. Is that who that is, Maddie Smiley? Maddie McElroy Smiley. She was a classy woman. And that's how we rocked through the airport. So, so she made you get dressed up to fly. You had to wear a shirt, a tie, and a suit to get on a plane. Hell no. Back then. Ooh, wait. Yes, sir. We was classy ass people. Uh, no, no, and, I'm right. and I can show you some pictures of my grandma and my granddaddy at the club with their tuxedo and evening gown. Yeah, on. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, I'm yeah. proud of that. Oh, yeah. That's no, classy. No, it is, man. I was, like, I was like, look at that right there. Look yes, at that. Sir. Look at Come little on. Ricky and shit. Ricky, damn. Let's go. I like this part of the show. <laughs> but, but no, no. No, that, that's all we got. We just wanted to put two pictures up that's there. That's it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Damn, shit. Yeah. But, but now this nigga here. Okay, how about this? <laughs> all right. Now before you go, now before you get out, now here's the part of the show I like. We like to play this wheel right here. Spin the wheel, okay? First of all, let me explain what some of the stuff is. So if it lands on one of these things, you got to kind of participate. Right. So uh, we can do like the, here's one here, the biggest lie you ever told. So you can tell any of the stories you just told me in the last hour. Right. Uh, you repeat those niggas. <laughs> You can repeat anyone. I, <laughs> I, I got, I got. All right, you can, if you trade, if you gonna trade places with somebody, who and why? Okay, you know, you know why. Um, we have a, a book that has a sexual passage. You got to read it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Or how you lost your virginity? Oh wow. Okay, remember oh, yeah, that? Remember oh, that. Damn. Remember, okay. Um, a celebrity crush. Somebody you have a crush on? You know, just you got to pick the phone up. You got to call it. You got two minutes to get that person to either, you know, how your macking skills are. That you going to her house or she's coming to your house. However, okay. you know what I'm saying? Whatever. In fact, you ain't even married here, right? No, you ain't married. I was married for 12 years, but I'm. I'm what you really? I, I was married for 12 years. But when I knew you, you was married. Uh, when I came out to your place, I. I had got married after after oh, that. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, I was married for twelve years. I did. I did nine. Yeah, I was faith, faithful to my wife. Never cheated. Never. Never. Really? Did nothing. Damn. Okay. You, you, you was a different. That's kind how of I got to my gig because oh, she was a flight attendant for Delta. Is that what it was? She still yeah, fly for yeah. Delta. I jump on the plane every now and then. She be working. Like, oh, oh, you still talk to her like that? Yeah, no, we, we we cool. That's good, man. Man, y'all they they become family. Well, not all the time. Yeah, no. Nah, shit, nah. okay. I know you, you living a good life, Ricky. Come on now. Okay, She's I'm still telling you. fine now. Is she still fine? She dated a judge in Detroit. You know the judge to be sitting on the front row at all them shows with that mink on? That, that, that's, what, that's what I mean? I she talked to him. Oh, hell, hell. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. Okay. You all know right. what I'm talking about. I think I do know what you're talking about. The light skin and be me at all the shows in Detroit. Detroit. Yeah. Right, right. Because I've done Detroit a couple of times. Uh, and, and there's, but a lot of niggas have furs on and, and light skin in Detroit, you know, in the front row. But I don't like know. Oh, well, 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 you never know. You might be able to circle back around, Vicky. Vicky, uh, you never I'm, know. I'm no. straight. You straight now? You yeah. straight. You know, me and you dated the same girl one time. Okay. I ain't gonna, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. I know, God. Oh, yeah. no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you, you think I'm bored yet? Uh, I, 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 I'll show you pictures of it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, no, oh, no, oh, they gotta do all the oh, ohs and shit. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm a, yeah, yeah. No, no, she was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. So you you can win some money. Okay. Okay. You know we we ain't got the Ricky Smiley money. Okay. So you might even want to open an envelope. You know when we, we pull it over. We got that and we got uh yeah and just, so we want you to 
she wasn't say callback. Oh, no, I'm going to do the callback one. So what happens okay. is you got to give a little energy to um, to do this. Okay. You spin it. Hold on. You want me to turn around to the camera? No, 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 no. We got, we got like this. Like, okay, okay. Like this. Yeah. Right. So, so, we, so we do. No, hold on. Now, I need a real spin to you now. I need a real. No, I, I didn't want to do this because I watched Price is Right. And, uh, is yeah, that a, I, I always waited for the opportunity to spin the wheel. Oh, okay, okay. Well, the opportunity yeah. is here. All right. Hold on. Get, 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 give him a, a drum roll, y'all, for Ricky. Ricky's going. Ricky, Ricky's going. Ready? All right, yeah, I'm ready now. What the hell did that land on? Real secret. A real secret. Is there a secret? Yeah, a real secret you want to share with us that you never told nobody? You know what I'm saying? That uh, you know, you ain't told nobody okay. before. Okay. Um, make it a good one. Okay. You got. I used to work at Showbiz Pizza. It's now Chuck E. Cheese. Okay. Damn, that's a secret. Huh? And uh, I worked in the kitchen. Okay. And uh, some some. Don't you dare. Some prejudiced white people out there called me and a dude named Sleepy, who I went to high school with, uh -huh. a N word. Ooh. And we, we made their pizza and I uh, took it back to the break room and rubbed our balls across their pizza no. before we put it in the <laughs> oven. <laughs> wow. So, so so it had a different little topping on it and shit. I never that's a that's you a true story. Rubbed your balls on some pizza? Our, not on our balls, I dig too. Rubbed the God damn, our, the whole, the whole pizza. And they had they had got uh, what did they get? Sausage one with sausage? They had got one with air it was got one with meat lovers and half pepperoni. I rub my dick and my balls across the whole pizza, <laughs> pull my underwear up and put it in no, the no, oven, come on, come on. cut it up, and then took it out there and watch him eat it. <laughs> That's a, I like that one. I ain't never heard of shit like that. Hey. Wow. Hey, I went home and took a shower, man. Man, my Smell. thing, my thing had mozzarella cheese, <laughs> bell peppers, onions, mush. <laughs> <laughs> that did mm. look like a <laughs> damn burrito or something. Hell no, hell I'm no. Sorry. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> That's a true story. That's a true story. Yeah. All right, because you're such a great, great dude, I just we, we give what's called a swag bag. Man, we give yeah. gifts. My podcast gives gifts, okay? Yeah. So open them up, look at them, check out what some of the stuff is, man. Oh, look thank at, you, yeah, man. Oh, come on, Ricky, come on, we do it. Check out whatever. No, I got this. You, you got that me right? one. I signed you, you one. one. I got, okay. but I, but I, I, okay. I, I signed it, and I'm gonna give right. give it a gift. To to, uh, I'm gonna get one, one of my favorite comedians, Rita Brent. Oh, that's my girl. Can, yeah, that's make this girl. out yeah, to Rita yeah. Brent. I'm gonna yeah. give it to her. Yeah. Cause that's my saw rod or whatever. Okay. Uh, rest in peace, Delta Sigma Theta. Uh, national president passed away this oh. morning. Uh, rest in peace. Uh, condolences to all the members of Delta Sigma Theta and the whole the whole divine nine. Uh, you know, want to offer right. uh, condolences. I was raised by Deltas and uh. Uh, Delta Sigma Theta has been awesome to my life, so rest in peace. But yeah, I want yeah. that. I got mine. Okay. You signed mine. Okay. So that's for Rita Brent. Mm -hmm. But uh, man, thank you for no, going no, over. No, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man, thank you, now man. That's, now that's no, that's a comedy. They have cards. It's like a, a game of comedy, uh, a trivia game. In fact, right. you're in the book. I mean, you're in those card games. Okay. okay. And you can get and you can get that at uh, comedyhype.com forward slash show. Well, yeah, yeah, but forward slash something. Show. Yeah. Come on, man. Huh? I'm wearing this. Shop, shop, my bad. Where do you Come want on. me to wear this? Man, whenever you want to wear it, brother. Oh, you, take, you take a picture in it, too? Absolutely. I, on, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it's something. Slim on. fit, too? Come on now. It, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah I'm going to do something on my, uh, on my IG with man, this. Man, I right appreciate here. that. Man. Absolutely. Come on. No, I support you, bro. <laughs> my hand right there. Yeah. 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 I'll shoot on the beach. On the beach, that show. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, that's in there. Thank you, bro. One more thing. I got a bracelet in there, brother. Come on. Come on, man. Don't stop like that. I got the okay. bracelet in there for you, brother. I thought you were giving the other bag with the little potato chips and no, stuff back there. Catering. <laughs> okay, that, that was catering. Catering here is terrible. Yeah, know, right, 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 right. The catering suck. I got some chili cheese Fritos, some damn Dang. Twizzers, some well, Twizzers. Well, what well, else in that bag? Well, well we, we, we do. We, and and, and we, 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 we roll the red carpet out for you, brother. Okay, most guests don't get nothing. Yeah. That's the best we had right there, brother. Now I got to go to cookout. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, thank you, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, a young sister, uh, uh, um, it's called uh, Celestial Goddess. She makes those bracelets. That's a bracelet for you, brother. You know, you can rock it, man. You like it's real thank stone. You, man. No BS. So you got some blue on one day, man. Yes, Pop, sir. it's a real deal, man. It's not nah, a fake you can rock this with so, yeah. anything. There you go, man. But no, Ricky, I appreciate you coming on my show, bro. You are a man of your word. You yes, came. Sir. You said, bro, there's a lot of comics and people who said they were going to come and didn't come. They ghosted me. Uh, Miss Pat. Uh, 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 no, she'll come. She'll, she'll come. She'll come. Uh, well, yeah, okay, well, she don't answer my call, though. Give I her, thought she was cool as hell, but she ain't coming. Give her a minute. She Jamie coming. Brown, he said he coming. I never heard from him again. You well, know, you know Jake like, been sick and he way out there in L.A. He, no, he here now. He here now. Oh, he is. This nigga live around the corner. 
What? You drove two hours. You wouldn't okay, walk two blocks. I tell you, he uh, yeah, that's my, that's my homie. Put, I was like, what? I put pressure on Jay. Okay, I'm like, come on, we yeah. comedians, man. Yeah, I put Jay in the All right, that's what it is. But no, I appreciate. It. I'm so happy for you, man. I'm thank you for coming on the show. First of all, I really mean that. But besides that, we have 30 years of, of friendship, yeah. brother, and I hope we have 30 years more, man. You're a good dude. I'm always there for you, man. If you ever need me, just holler at me, brother. I mean that sincerely, though. Not some Hollywood shit. Oh, I'm real with the stuff, man. So yeah. thank you so much. I appreciate. It. Thank y'all. Thank. Uh, give a round of applause for Ricky Smiley coming on. Yo, you know how we do it here on Pierre's Panic Room. Every week we have some great guests. This is no different, man. I got love for the brother. Thank y'all for watching. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell. At boom. There it is right there, man. And I'll see y'all. Love y'all. And we'll holler at y'all later. Hey, what up? This your boy, Ricky Smiley, man. I survived Pierre's Panic Room, man. It was crazy, man. It got hot in here. But hey, we made it. Thank you for the opportunity, bro. Love you. Hey, what up, this your boy, Ricky Smiley, man. Hey, make sure y'all click the subscribe button. Did I say it right? Subscribe, subscribe. Boy, black folks, is there somewhere, is there something black folks can't say? That's, that's one of my harms. Subscribe, click, just click it. You know the hell I'm talking about. Click it.